more sophisticated patterns of order. Now, order presupposes intelligence. <clears throat> All of this presupposes some intelligence. But intelligence must be somewhere and function in some way, and therefore it must be in some sense contained, because intelligence is always contained in soul. Therefore, if there's intelligence in the universe exhibited by those four principles, then that presupposes there must be soul in general throughout the entire cosmos. This is quite interesting. This thesis is developed in Plato's Timaeus. That's his cosmology. And uh, that's what we should do one day. <clears throat> uh, his cosmology is magnificent, of course. And that's where he fully develops that theme. Now, he says, look here. If therefore soul in general operates through intelligence, then obviously it functions in two ways. It takes care of all that is soulless. And since the soul in general can take on many forms, it traverses the heavens throughout many forms. But when intelligence exhibits itself on the highest level, and the particular form of the soul exhibits perfection, then the soul and that intelligence can then soar. And this is where we get into the myth. When it's perfect, we say it's fully winged. And now here we get the idea of the winged, right? Now for those of you who are familiar with the soul, now there's a very beautiful soul with wings flying around. When the soul is perfect, now remember we're using soul on two levels, cosmic, the entire universe, wherever there is order and intelligence, it presupposes soul, and also individuals. Now, at this point, uh, soul in general, therefore, governs the whole world, and when it's fully, fully developed, fully perfected in many of its various forms, and then ascends. Now we want to know about that ascension and how it relates, relates to madness, because madness is our theme. Because of the many forms the soul can take, some are less capable of making that journey, ascending, because where it ascends is to the heavens, the higher heavens. Heavens is a word that is also Uranus, which is the god heaven, or Uranus. And therefore, they ascend to a banquet and a feast in the heavens. Now, what is this image of souls? Now, behind every one of these images in the myth, there is a content. The content is an intellectual understanding of the way in which these forms are rep rep the represent major ideas. The wings in Plato are the consequence of being nourished and grow. There's a certain nourishment and growth that has to take place, and that takes place when one seeks and has experiences of beauty, naturally, after all, wisdom, and goodness. That's what causes the soul to develop, gain strength, so it's for its flight into the heavens. Now, there's a banquet in the heavens, and therefore all of the various forms of soul, and especially the highest expression of soul in its upward flight, is Zeus. And so when the banquet is announced, Zeus and the eleven squadrons follow him, make a, a direct ascent into the heavens for a banquet to be held on the highest top, as they call it, the top of the heavens. Now, as we said, the soul takes on many forms. Some are unable to take the flight. Some, therefore, are unable to reach that excellence or that banquet. And we have to understand, therefore, those that sought and those that fell. Right? The fall of the soul in the mythical world. How is that brought about? Now, remember, this is a journey after, after death. Either one of those two ideas of death is agreeable. Now, Zeus, of course, is the highest expression of soul, the divine soul. And therefore, as we have here, it's a, it, he's aloft with a winged chariot because he doesn't have wings. The chariot that he, he, uh, 
He rides as itself winged, and that's the highest expression of winged, because the whole body that he's with, therefore, must contain nothing but beauty, wisdom, and goodness to the highest degree. But so Zeus then arranges all and cares for all. Uh, Zeus cares for all. That's providential, right? Providential. Uh, because uh, in the Greek world, of course, uh, providence is being able to see ahead, to be able to, under, to, be able to grasp the, the eternal, you're able to see and to cease with such clarity that therefore that seeing can always be connected with a general goodness that develops. Therefore, it's a providential seeing. Uh, video, right, pro, pro. To see video, right, providential. To see before, right? So it's the kind of vision that comes before intellect, higher than intellect, and always attains a certain uh, uh, insight into the nature of goodness. And that's Zeus. That's how Zeus is described. So with the 12 squadrons, they run up to the heavens. And as they run up to the top of the heavens, which in the myth is called the vault of heaven, they then... As you can see in this beautiful picture, there they are in the vault of heaven. And they journey all the way up. And uh, of course, I have them sitting there because it's easier to draw that way. They then reach the outer surface of the heavens and all of those souls that are able to make that journey. And therefore, they can then have a splendid vision of the outer or the, uh, what's beyond the heavens which in Plato, of course, is pure being. And that pure being already has three aspects of it, which we'll get into quickly. Right? And the three aspects, of course, are uh, when the soul is there for on the, uh, on the outer surface of the heavens and they, the whole thing revolves around and it's revolving around, they're able to perceive justice, uh, temperance, and uh, knowledge. Oh, that's incorrect. Judge of knowledge. All right. So what do they encounter there? They have a vision of justice, right, truth, right, and knowledge. Now, what kind of knowledge is this that's gained? It is the highest expression of knowledge. And uh, we'll take a little bit of time on that. Um, the, um, one, of the, one of the highest aspects of being is in the Greek, the idea of usia. Now, why use a Greek word? Because it has a use which is not current in English. That's the only reason. Now, this word is variously translated as essence and substance and being. But the reason I'd like to keep that use is because at the very core of reality and pure being, it is not a dead thing. It's not only luminous, but it has a profound Re recursive property through it turns upon itself and therefore that that being is recursive turning upon itself seeing itself uh, in a intellectual vision where the intellect is seeing intelligently the intelligible that's usia so recursive turns upon itself sees itself sees itself now what does it encounter Various translations of it, a colorless, formless, intangible, truly existing essence. 